So if you remember a couple of weeks ago, we talked about using the uh, routing and remote access service to create a remote access VPN. And one of the things we talked about is that in Active Directory, we need to give permission for users to be able to access that VPN. Now, I've already opened up Active Directory users and computers here, and I've opened up the administrative user. So if you remember, we looked at this, we go to the user, we go to dial in permissions, and then here for network access permission, we have three options, allow access, deny access, or I'm going to select this one, control access through the NPS network policy. Now, NPS is a network policy server. And so we use NPS to handle authentication and access to our network through policies rather than going to individual users and allowing individual user access. NPS, the policy server, is what allows us to, we'll use it in a radius configuration. So we will have people connecting to, radius clients connecting to the NPS server to grant or deny access based on specific policies. So that's the idea behind NPS. Now I'm going to go ahead and close this out and let's talk about installing NPS and then we'll also take a couple of videos to look at configuring and using NPS. So we'll go to manage, add roles and features and this is a really straightforward installation. The configuration is a little more interesting but the uh, installation is pretty straightforward. What we're looking for is this network policy and access services. So go ahead and select that and add features. Now that adds a little page down here for network policy and access services. And up here you'll notice what it does. It helps safeguard the security of your network. So we'll just click next. We don't need any features. And on the NPS page, there's actually nothing for us to configure. It tells us that we're going to have to do some configuration a little bit later on. So you can deploy NPS as a remote authentication dial-in user service or radius server and proxy. We'll talk about what that is in a minute. After installing NPS, you can configure NPS from the NPAS homepage. Okay, fine. Let's go ahead and click Next and Install, and that will start our installation. Now, this was really straightforward. <clears throat> the configuration is going to be a little more interesting, but even that's not too bad. But there's a couple of terms we need to get in mind first, and that is the way RADIUS works with NPS. So we'll have the RADIUS client, the RADIUS server, and then an access client. Now, the RADIUS server is the server that is going to handle authentication requests. And we can also have a RADIUS proxy in there. So the RADIUS server handles authentication requests. The RADIUS client is not the client PC that's trying to connect. That's the access client. The RADIUS client is the NAS or network access server that they're trying to connect to. So let's imagine a scenario in which you have a client computer connecting to a VPN server which connects to an NPS server for authentication. The NPS server for authentication, I'll just I'll pretend like we're diagramming it out here. The NPS server for authentication is our RADIUS server. The VPN server, that's actually a RADIUS client because it's what's requesting access from the NPS server. And then the client that's trying to connect to the VPN server, that's the access client. So that's our terminology. Let me introduce one more thing here, and that is a RADIUS proxy. So sometimes if you have a whole bunch of RADIUS requests and it's too much for the RADIUS server to handle, what we do is we create a RADIUS proxy. And so in that case, the access client would connect to the access server. In our little scenario, it's VPN, although it can be other things. It can be wireless or Ethernet using uh, 802.1x. It can be a variety of different things which then would connect to a radius proxy. And what would happen is that the radius proxy, we would have some policy checking. And so we would check to see if this should be allowed to uh, go through to a radius server for authentication and which radius server it should go to or if it should be denied. And then based on that policy, the proxy would then forward the request to the radius server, which then would the correct radius server, because we may have more than one here for load balancing. And that radius server then would respond to the radius proxy, which would respond to the radius client or the network access device, and then allow or deny access to the radius or the access client. So hopefully all of that makes sense. 
Now I'm going to go ahead and close this. We're going to go to our tools and we're going to look at our network policy server management console. Now we're not going to go too deep into this. I want to do this in another video, but I do want to give you an idea a little bit of how we're set up. So we have Radius clients and servers, so we can set up Radius uh, clients. And remember, that's going to be like our VPN servers or remote gateway servers or whatever is going to manage uh, the clients are going to be connecting to. And then we can con uh, configure remote Radius groups. And that will allow us to set this device up as a proxy where we can notice right here, forward connection requests, um, to other servers when we're using this as a radius proxy. Policies are where we actually set our policies. We're going to look at all of this stuff in a couple of subsequent videos here. And accounting is where we configure how we're going to log all of this information. So that gives you a real quick overview of the layout of how to install NPS, what it does in the layout of the NPS console. Now, we're going to tackle configuration in a couple of subsequent videos so that this one doesn't end up going too long. So, this gives us our installation and our overview. We will dive into our configuration in our next video.